Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today's video I want to talk about uh, DOS debug. Uh, just real quick, show you what hardware I'm running it on. So this is my homemade PC. It's, uh, this one's the uh, V20, or this is an 8088-2 running at 8 megahertz. Got 512k of RAM, it boots from a USB drive, and uh, it's powered by an ATX power supply there. VGA uh, monitor, there's a network card in there, and for this demo I don't have that set up. So, now this is not like an all-inclusive video for DOS debug, just more of some tips and what you can do with it. So, Let's just get right into the program. So the first time I ever played with this, I was just young and I typed debug, I didn't know what the program was and I see this little prompt that it has and I don't know what to do. So if you hit question mark, it'll give you a list of what you can do. Now there is a version for free DOS and it's got a few different options, but uh, they, they work about the same. So we've got, we'll just kind of go right into it. So right off the top, you've got assemble there. So if you type A, it'll give you a memory address. You got your segment and your offset. You know, and this is a great tool for learning how uh, Brill mode PCs work. So you, you could just start typing in your, your assembly. So they, you don't put any prefixes for hexadecimal. Um, I don't know if it does binary. I can't remember. I doubt it does. So you can just type in code like that. So if you tit assemble again, you can see we'll right back to the 106 address there where you left off. Just hit enter on a blank line, it takes you back to the little uh, prompt thing. If you type assemble 100, it'll, it'll go back to 100. If you type assemble with a uh, segment and an offset, it'll go there. Now here's something to keep in mind. As far as I know, and as far as I can tell, this is actually, it's real mode, and you're actually going to start keying in code at that memory address for the PC. And this is where the tool comes in handy for me, is you're able to uh, check memory addresses, check, you know, what works, what doesn't work. It's really a, a versatile tool. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll not do that. See, and if you tip assemble again, it goes right back to where you left off. So let's just quit real quick. We don't want to be messing around too much. You've got um, compare. You got it'll tell you what it does: range and address. I uh, I don't use that one much, but dump I do use. So if you just hit dump, what it does is it displays. Looks like eight lines of hexadecimal, and it starts at um, offset 100. Now, a lot of this, you got to understand, com files, they start at offset 100, and that's what this, that's what you're going to create with this as a com file. Uh, so anyway, it always starts at 100, and just like assemble, you can dump any address you type in. You can see. That's what's showing it at that uh, FFFF0 address. Now this is this is where this one is very handy. You can look at um, say your this is your um, that's your uh, boot code right there. So EA is jump far, and this would be your address and segment here. Your offset would be first, and if you understand or if you know how this works, it's backwards. So this is address F000, and then you'd have your, your colon, and then it'd be E05B, and EA is the opcode for jump far. 
And that's all your, uh, your, jump, your boot code ever really does on a PC. Now, because this is ROM, I, I misspoke earlier, because this is ROM, you can't enter into it because it does, my uh, board doesn't have the ability to write to the ROM. Uh, but if you're in a piece of memory that you can write to, it'll definitely write to it. Let's uh, let's dump another piece of memory here. Let's go. You, you can do a space or no space. We'll just do this this little piece here. So seven thousand. Of course, that's in hexadecimal. But you, you see, there's some some gibberish in there. It's probably not even being used right now. It's just whatever random bits of code was in there or bytes were in there when it, the PC booted up. But the reason why I showed you 7,000 is, let's go to 8,000, which would be beyond the 512K limit of my memory. And as you can see, they're all the same. That's because there's nothing to read, and it's just getting whatever default value, whichever way those pins are being pulled on the data bus, for whatever reason, and, they, and that's what you're getting. You're just getting EA over and over. And you could dump 9,000, same thing. But if you dump, like, say, a memory, a video memory, right here, B80, it's actually going to give you, you can see 7,000 over here, it's giving you what's in video memory. Let's dump, so... This would be your interrupt vector table. And like I say, this is real mode. So this is real, this is live. And you could actually theoretically find a, a blank vector down here. And you could key in some code, some, some, a jump address, because it's a address, your segment and your offset. Every four bytes makes up a segment and an offset for your interrupt jump. You, uh, you could sit there and really kind of mess around and, play with some custom interrupts. You could also obviously write some uh, a program that does that, plugs it in for you, and you could come in here and see if it plugged in. So so that's, that's dump. Uh, let's go, let's see, enter address list. I don't, don't know if I ever did enter before. Fill is pretty straightforward. You can just do an address to Let's go, okay, look, we'll better, better exit so that we can get a, a fresh start. So fill, well, let's just dump it first. And then we'll go fill 100 to 300 F, and then we'll dump 100 again. And you can see it filled it all with F, so fill's pretty straightforward. So go, which is the next one down here, that'll actually execute some code starting at 100. Now, with the DOS version, I haven't tried it on the free DOS version, you, um, it's like you can run it once, and then you run it again, and it crashes. Now, obviously, you can put in go and an address there. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Let's, let's try something out here. So we'll just make our... And we'll just put in some code. Return. Now, on your comp file, you always have to end with return if you didn't know that. So now if we type go, you can see you've got it printed an A to the screen. Now if I push go again, it's, it hang, hangs up. So let's just see if we can reboot here. See, I can't even reboot. It's hung up so bad. I'll just push the reset button. And that's, that's the issue I've seen with go, but maybe if you put in the address, if you put in go 100 each time, it may work better, or I've also wondered if you need to restore all your register to their default previous values when you return to the uh, operating system. May reboot a few times, gotta hit control, alt, delete, so it might be in the buffer. I'll just hit the power button. All right, so we'll get back into debug. So I don't, I don't want to play around with Go too much, but you, you've seen what it does. Um, 
like I said, it usually works once and then it doesn't seem to work again. So now hex, so put an H, let's go D, F, it, I think it adds them. That's pretty much all it does. I, I'm pretty sure that's all it does is adds those together. Uh, in, you can actually read in from a port. Now this would be another one of them good tools. If you're like breadboarding right off the board and you wanted to read in from a port address, it, it's a great option to have. Uh, let's just try in uh, 61. So right now, port 61 has the value of 0E on it. Let's see, so uh, move uh, range. I've never used it, but it, I think it's self-explanatory. You can move a block of code if you wanted to. So like say you wanted to move block uh, from 100 to 200, obviously in hex, to 200 to 300, you would type in a range and then the start address of where you want that range to move to. So something like, let's just dump and take a look here. So let's let's fill 100 to 200 with F. Let's dump 100 again. You see it's F. We dump, dump. So now 200's not. So let's just move 100 to 200 to 200. Now if you dump 200, you can see it moved and I would assume that uh, it's more of a copy, not a not a not like it relocated and cleared out the previous memory. So that's move for you. Now name. This is this is where making programs comes into play. Now typically what I do is I make a program and instead of using Go, I save the program, test it, and then re-edit it. So we'll just kind of go through the process. So name. We'll just do test. Dot com. And then we'll just assemble a code. And then uh, and we'll return. Now, we're going to kind of skip here for a second, but we're going to save this. So to save this, you need to do RCX, so that's register CX, and you want to put in a number. And that's going to be, I usually just go like the run one after, so like six. Or I could do like uh, 200 would be 5, 5 12 uh, bytes. So let's just do 6. Now we've already named it. We've, we've entered in our code. And we've told register CX is going to be 6. That's count register. And then we just write it. And now it just created the file and it wrote 6 bytes. Now you can uh, quit. And right, right there you see test. So I must have had one before, otherwise it would have been at the bottom of the list. And uh, if you run test, it puts an E to the screen. And unlike the Go, it'll just keep working. Now, if you type debug, you can do this two ways. You can type in test. And it's going to load it in. You hit unassemble. And you can see our code right there. And then you can modify it. Now... Let's uh, quit, and we'll just do debug. And you can do load. Let me look here a minute, so let's see. Oh, loads for your, sorry. Let's see here. I was thinking you could, oh. Let's try name test.com and then load and then you unassemble it and there you go it loaded so you gotta you gotta enter the name and then hit load otherwise if you look so we hit a whole bunch of things just now if you if you do load it wants the address the drive the first sector and the number or if you just put load with the named file it loads the file name so you can do it either way do debug the name or you do debug put in the name and then load and it pulls it in so let's kind of skip down here a little bit. We did, we already did write, unassemble. I showed you how unassemble worked. So like you come in here, now you can see it started at uh, 120. So you can do uh, unassemble 100 again. 
you could see that, oh, we left off at 105 is C, uh, C3 return. And then I could go assemble 105 and add a little bit more code and go, uh, let's go interrupt 10 again and continue and do a return. And then we can change our size to eight and we can write it. So that's how an assemble works. Let's look here. Now, there's a few on here I don't use much, like the search, but supposedly, I, I think you just, um, let's go search 100 to 200 for C3, and it tells you right there, our segment, and at 107, which is correct, is where C3 is, and that's returned. Let's try something here real quick and see if you can type in some assembly. No, you, you can't. So it's got to be a, a hexadecimal value there. Uh, trace, I, I have no idea what trace does. I'm not going to mess with it right now. Um, and then let's see here, register. So if you hit R, it actually lists your registers. And you can see the CX register has an 8 in there. So let's see if there's anything else I should cover real quick. So that that's kind of, I think I've covered most everything you're going to use. The ones I use the most is dump and assemble and... Uh, obviously the right and the name, but I use dump a lot to just examine my memory to see what's going on in memory. So anyway, if you have any questions about debug uh, or you got more insight on it, uh, leave a comment. Uh, thanks for checking out my video today.